In the 141st Psalm, we find these words. O Lord, I call to you. Come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense, the lifting of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Our dear friend, Brenda Mandine, who we lost this winter, bought this thurible and this incense boat for St. Mark's before she died. About a week after her funeral, I came into my office only to find it sitting on my desk. Her daughter said she had so much fun picking it out, and oh, how I would have loved to have been able to sit down with Brenda and hear her thoughts on it. It's beautiful, that's easy to see, but I would have loved to have been able to hear from her what about this particular thurible and boat struck her. We've hung it here in the church as a way for all of us to enjoy it just by looking at it. It's so beautiful, we don't just want to stick it in a drawer. And for me, whenever I see it, it has the added benefit of reminding me of Brenda. And so it makes me smile. St. Mark's isn't a church that actually includes the burning of incense in our worship more than a few times a decade. But I do want to take this opportunity to just talk about why a Christian church would use incense in worship and what it's all about. Incense does two main things. First, it's a physical reminder of our prayers. Just like in the 141st Psalm, the rising of the smoke is meant to represent our prayers, which are rising to heaven. So in a way, you could say that incense is a prompt for us to remember to pray and to visualize our prayers ascending to God. Second, incense in the Bible was always a physical reminder of the presence of God. When God gave Moses the incredibly detailed instructions on what his tabernacle was to be like, one of the features that God wanted in it was an altar of incense upon which incense would be burning perpetually. When Solomon built the temple in Jerusalem, there was a larger altar of incense placed right outside the Holy of Holies where the Ark of the Covenant was kept. When the Bible describes the heavenly throne room where God reigns over all of creation, the Bible tells us of the incense and smoke that fills the heavens. In Revelation chapter 8, then another angel who had a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense to offer along with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar before the throne. And the smoke of the incense together with the prayers of the saints rose up before God from the angel, from the hand of the angel. In Revelation chapter 18, and the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. Now, I do know there are lots of people who don't like incense or who are allergic. To them, I do have some bad news. If you don't like incense, you might not like heaven too much because in heaven, apparently, it's just great columns of incense everywhere. In Eastern churches, Russian Orthodox, Greek Orthodox, etc., they have incense at every service. There is no option for a divine liturgy in their traditions without incense. Suffice it to say, we're not becoming Russian Orthodox here at St. Mark's, and we won't be doing incense frequently. I am going to use this thurible for the first time, though, on Maundy Thursday, April 1st. On the occasion of the church remembering the night of Jesus' Last Supper, we'll sense the altar at the beginning of the service and right before the Eucharistic prayer. I'm a little rusty about how to use it, but I have a few days to figure out how to do it again. But Otherwise, the next time you're worshiping here, in person or online, take note of this thurible and remember our dear friend Brenda.